Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome back from the break. This is Shabbat service, the second half of Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who listen later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. It is Saturday. July 30th, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. And in the Hebrew calendar, the year 5782, it is the second of Av. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Now, just to recap, because I have covered all of this in the first, the beginning of the first segment, we're going to go over of just the announcements. We continue on with our Bible study in the English Standard Version of the Bible. We will be completing this week the book of 1 Kings, reading chapters 12 to 22 this week. Also, we meet live in real time Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our dedicated channel on freeconferencecall.com. This is a different platform altogether. Um, you can join by phone or by website. And if you join by phone, what I do is I do post the announcements on social media platform and we are on MeWe, we are on Gab, we are on USA.life and we're on Facebook. So I make that announcement uh, every week. Um, some of the platforms, I, I do have it pinned um, to our group. So what you would do is um, there are two links. The first link is the phone connection. If you want to join by phone, uh, you would click on to that. And there's 80, there's, there's more than 80 different countries that this is the free list that they gave us. Don't be discouraged. Um, as I put on the announcement, this is the free list, even though it says toll, it is not toll. Uh, no one has ever paid anything uh, to you know, on their phone bills or anything. So don't worry about that. Um, this platform, I've used this platform for a long time um, in, in, in our ministry for it's almost two years. And prior to that, I took college courses. So uh, it is a very safe platform um, and very trusted platform. So um, by all means, don't hesitate to, to, to join us and, and don't worry about the, the toll thing even like i said the usa it says there's toll and no nobody's ever paid for anything what you need to do is you need to find your country dial the in country number and then wait for the prompt and then enter the access code and on that drop down list on the top right hand corner you're going to find the access code and the number sign really important after you enter the access code to enter the the number sign um, this access code is just our meeting number, and, and it is the same for all countries. So there's not a special access code for India or USA or Israel or, no, it's all the same. Um, it's just the, the one thing that is different is your individual in-country number, that, that, that beginning number to, to, to punch in. And then, like I said, wait for the access code. Wait, wait for them to ask for the access code. Put that number in and then hit the number sign and it should bring you into the conference room. If you want to try it to see if you can access it before Tuesday night at 8 p.m., by all means, feel free to do so. You will know you have been successful uh, because uh, when it says the host has not yet joined the meeting and or the conference, whatever it says, it just says the host has not joined. And then I'll proceed on to playing music nonstop. But that that way, if you want to try it ahead of time, you can and know that you have access. The other way to access is um, to click on to the second link and that will give you the web address. You can download either the phone app or the web app, whichever you're using. Um, and it is safe to download it. Um, I have downloaded it on my computer. It's been on my computer for years. And once you downloaded it, it, it will prompt you to run the exec, go ahead and run it, and then it will prompt you into the conference area. And when you get into the conference area, you will see a built-in microphone, camera, and a chat room. So those are the two ways you can join. Uh, we'd love to have you. We have been meeting for quite some time. Um, we use this for multiple things. Um, we use it for fellowship. We use it for uh, 
to, for prayer requests for prayer. Um, and we are also doing um, a beginner's class right now um, in spiritual warfare. So we're about halfway through um, taking our time. <laughs> and um, we will probably, the next class that we'll, we'll be doing, we'll be hearing from God. Um, so we do classes. Um, I have also used this platform to host other ministries such as praise and worship ministries, writing ministries. So um, if that interests you, if you're a musician, a uh, praise and worship leader, you want to share your music, you want to share something of an upcoming event or just to pop on and announce something, um, or um, share a book that you've written or anything, uh, anything pertaining to the kingdom of God, we're all in this together. Uh, and it's, it's our ministry's way of tithing into your ministry. We'd love to help you um, to promote you in what you're doing. Um, and I do have the ability to do recordings for you um, if you should happen to want us to host you. Um, so we can do MP3 recordings and MP4 for recordings and I have done them and sent them to to people that we have hosted in the past so I've sent them to them in an email so once they have we have posted them so that's just an option if that is something that interests you um, by all means you can certainly um, contact me and I will be glad to work with you on that um, we can even use a Tuesday evening that, that is already designated as a time for our ministry. Um, or if that doesn't work, we can pick another time also. That would be fine. But anyway, we do meet live in real time every Tuesday night. Um, we have been meeting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, our original time was 8, and we had moved it because of 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 group needs and now we're moving it back to the original time because of group needs again we're we're very flexible so um so come join us um lately the last couple of weeks we've been we've been ending a little earlier than usual but um there have been times we're in there at midnight um we're still going strong at midnight so it just depends um so, but I mean, if you're going to pop in at nine o'clock, you know, if you can't make it right at eight o'clock and you come in at nine o'clock, that's fine. Uh, we will definitely still be there. And that is all I'm going to say about, um, about that. And again, um, next Saturday um, will be the first Shabbat in the, the month of August. So again, um, when we have our first Shabbat of the month, of the Gregorian calendar month, we also do uh, Holy Communion. So just to, to give a heads up for that, we just had Holy Communion, communion this week for uh, Rosh Kadesh um, and bringing in the new Hebrew calendar month of Av. Uh, so we do that every, every Hebrew calendar month that we're bringing in and every first Saturday of the uh, of a new Gregorian calendar month. So that will that will happen next next Saturday. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about announcements. I'm gonna open this up with our opening prayer and then we'll we'll get the second half of Shabbat go uh going um and actually we have uh Brit Kadasha read uh scriptures and that is from the New Testament or the New Covenant um, and we will be doing an altar call and then closing out this week's Shabbat. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you for the ability to be together today. We thank you for Shabbat. We thank you for a day that you sanctified as holy and a day for rest. A day to be in your presence. To be in your presence is humbling and it's wonderful. We ask your Holy Spirit to guide us through the rest of Shabbat service to keep the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart open and receptive to your word. We thank you. 
and we worship you. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather Benaya Israel for worship. And we're going to sound the shofar now. I am going to pause it now. As I mentioned on the first segment, we do not upload songs in these recordings in part one or part two. We have never done that. It's just, <laughs> we just don't get into all of that because of all the different places that we post. However, if you are following on social media, I do post songs. Um, before I post part one and part two of Shabbat, I post a series of songs. And then after part two, I will post another series of songs. You can use them for your praise and worship songs, or if you have other praise and worship that you prefer to listen to, that's fine. Um, I'm going to pause it for you to do so. I just want to mention, we do not delete praise and worship. We do not omit it. We actually do it ourselves because praise and worship is, is one of the most important elements of any service. We were created to praise and worship our creator and something that we will be doing uh, in eternity. So yes, we, we do honor praise and worship. It's just, we don't want to get into copyright things and, and all of that. So as I mentioned on part one, um, there is a positive note to all of this um, because when I do post, I post songs, I post them directly from, um, from the artist's YouTube channel. So it will direct you to their channel, which gives them credit for, for their stuff, but it also opens you to who these people are, uh, the wonderful music that they bring to us, and it's anointed, and it certainly is wonderful praise and worship songs. And then also, uh, many of them have links to where you can purchase their songs and, and promote them as well and support them. And please do. Um, it, these songs are that, that I post are, you know, from really, really talented artists and, and they have wonderful music. So, so take a, take that an opportunity to, you know, to, to bookmark their, their, their YouTube channels and go back then and, and see what else they have and, and certainly support uh, what they do because they work really hard to bring us this wonderful praise and worship music. So there's a, there's a, there's a positive to all of that. So enjoy if you're listening to the songs that I do post on social media. Um, but by all means, I'm going to, I'm going to pause now for you to do praise and worship. Then we're going to come back with the Brit Kadasha scriptures. Okay. We've got four different scriptures from from the Brit Kadasha this week, from the New Covenant, or many people refer to the, the Brit Kadasha as the New Testament. So we're going to go to the book of Matthew, and in the book of Matthew, we are going to read chapter 5, verses 17 to 37, filling the law to the fullest. Do not think that I came to abolish the Torah or the prophets. This is Yeshua speaking. So here you go. For those that want to discount the Torah, he never discounted the Torah or the prophets. And in the Shema, the, the second, the second commandment, the second greatest commandment, after he, he, he mentioned that, he said uh, on those two commandments, you know, the Shema and then love your neighbor as yourself. Um, that on these two commandments hangs the law of the Torah and the prophets. He wasn't about taking, telling you not to follow the Torah. 
Uh, as I mentioned many, many times before, if you look at the Torah, now we don't stone people to death and that kind of stuff, no. But if you look at the groundwork of, of what Adonai was giving to the people, he was giving them he was giving them moral standards, which today in our world, there's, if you look at the world uh, around us, there's, there's a definite uh, disconnect when it comes to moral standards. Uh, they, in many aspects, it's gone out the window. Um, so to come back to that, um, to come back to those moral standards that Anna and I laid out for the people, no, you know, there is not, one thing wrong with that. I mean, we're not supposed to be having, uh, committing adultery when you get married. You're not supposed to be sleeping with, with this member of a family, that member of a family. No, that's immoral. And he made that a point. And there's no reason that that should go out the window by today's standards either. That he gave these people a moral compass through the Torah. And through a relationship with Yeshua, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Well, what does that mean? Yeshua, Yeshua was the word became flesh. He's the word. The word is the word of God. Hello. <laughs> okay, so we're beginning right with this. And, and, and I needed to address that because there's so many people that say, oh, that was the Old Testament. That doesn't apply. There's a lot of things in the Old Testament that have yet to be fulfilled. And you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, water, as they say. That's a strange <laughs> saying, but you can't throw out the Old Testament and just follow the New Testament. You, you will miss so much. They're connected in they're just they're connected there's a lot of types and shadows uh, that occur in the old testament that are fulfilled also in 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 the new testament yeshua is you know the the sacrificing of the animals to cover sin was a type and shadow what yeshua did in the new testament so how can you throw out the old testament you can't you can't throw out all and any of it, and and you don't want to. This is the word of God. So here is Yeshua, the opening statement that he's saying in the first set of scriptures. Do not think that I came to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. 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 I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away. Not the smallest letter or seraph shall ever pass away from the Torah until all things come to pass. Has all things come to pass yet? Not everything. There's prophetic word that has not yet come to pass. And so many people are hitting the, you know, jumping on the bandwagon and including the other side, the evil side is trying to bring about the end real fast. Well, hold on here. Yeshua said, not the smallest letter or seraph shall ever pass away from the Torah until all things come to pass. Everything must be fulfilled. Our God is a God of order. He's not going to say, well, well, we're just going to throw that out and we're just going to bring it to a conclusion right now. Forget, forget what I said, said to my prophets. And no, he, he will never do that. If you think that he would do that, then you don't know our father. Um, so, he is a God of order and everything will be completed. Now he did say there is a, a statement that says he would, would shorten the days and because the very elect could become confused and fall away. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that certainly is, it can come into play and will come into play, but everything will be fulfilled. Everything. So we need to be discerning. We need to be careful about who you listen to because you could be listening to some false doctrine. And you know what? Remember how the serpent took one little piece of truth and then twisted the rest and enticed Eve and it was blown right then and there. He tried to do it 
with Yeshua, but Yeshua was on to him, and Yeshua wasn't going to fall for for the evil one anyway. But if you look at what's going on in the world today, there's there's a lot of that. There's a lot of you know a little bit of truth, and then then people embellish on it and and twist it and turn it, and by by the end result, you don't have truth at all. So be careful. Rightly divide the word. And there's people that are out there, and I've seen it on social media. It is like <laughs> some some of the strangest things that I've seen that are so unbiblical. Um, it is unbelievable. <laughs> I just I just have to keep scrolling. <laughs> like no. <laughs> um, so be careful. You know, Yeshua and the disciples said in their day. There had already been false prophets and and wolves among you know wolves among the sheep that would trip you up to just really be careful who you listen to. You know, know that it is it is biblical because you can you can get deceived very very easily, and this is this is what you don't want to have done. And and there's a lot of people that will will appear that they know what they're talking about and, and then they say something totally off <laughs> off the chain and it's like, where did you get that? <laughs> and I see that quite a bit. If if you can't rightly divide the word, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be Bereans, you know, and, and you need to have a copy of the Bible. You need to be reading the Bible to know what people are saying and they will take one little bit and they will run with it and they won't you know that that's that that's another thing that i see a lot of people do they'll take a they'll take a passage but they won't finish and go on to the next passage that that further explains it but they'll go with with one passage and just go off the deep end with it it's like that's not what was being said <laughs> continue to read and get the whole picture um you can't just do that. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> we'll get back to, to the reading here. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, this one shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and Torah scholars, you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever commits murder shall be subject to judgment. But I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be subject to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Araka, shall be subject to the council. And whoever says, you fool, shall be subject to fiery Gehenna. Now, Raka is an Aramaic word for empty one. Yeah, I'm going to contrast that in the English Standard Version, um, that that little segment, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So therefore, if you are presenting your offering upon the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent while you are with him on the way. Otherwise, your opponent may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the assistant, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid back the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So he's being even tougher than what the Torah has said. He brought a whole new light onto uh, these mitzvah, these commandments. 
And if your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away, it is better for you that one part of your body should be destroyed than, than your whole body be thrown into Gehenna. And your right hand causes you to stumble, cut off, and throw it away. It is better for you that one part of your body should be destroyed than your whole body go into Gehenna. It was said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall carry out your oath to Adonai. Here we go with the vow again. But I tell you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet. Remember, we read that part in, in Isaiah. Or by Jerusalem, for it is the great city, it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black, but let your word, yes, be yes, and your no, no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. And from the Gospel of Mark, verse, uh, not, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, chapter 9, verses 33 to 50, the secret of childlike humility. Then they came to Capernaum, and when Yeshua was in the house, he began to ask the disciples, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. Sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, If any man wants to be first, he shall be least of all. And the servant of everyone, taking a small child, he set him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not me but the one who sent me john said to him teacher we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us but yeshua responded don't stop him no one who does a miracle in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil about me he who is not against us is for us for whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Messiah, amen, I tell you, he will never lose his reward. But whoever causes one of these little ones who trust in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone put around his neck and to be thrown into the sea. So, yeah, you know, and, and that would apply to false doctrine and, and making people stumble. Because we're all children of God, so it is not a good thing. The secret of salt, and if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter in, into life crippled than having two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than having your two feet to, to be thrown into Gehenna. If your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you flavor it? Have salt. In yourselves and keep shalom with one another. And the next set of Bible verses is from Philippians chapter 3, 1 to 21. Where do you put your confidence? That is the title. Finally. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To keep writing the same things to you is not troublesome for me, but for you it is a safeguard. Beware the dogs, beware the evil workers, beware of the mutilation, for it is we who are the circumcision who worship by the Ruach Elohim 
and a glory in Messiah Yeshua and have not depended on the flesh, though I myself might have confidence in in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he might depend on the flesh, I far far more circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the Torah of Pharisees as for zeal, persecuting Messiah's community, as for Torah righteousness found blameless. Now, this is Paul speaking to them. But whatever things were gained to me, these I have considered as lost for the sake of the Messiah, more than that, I considered all things to be lost in comparison to the surpassing values of the knowledge of Messiah Yeshua, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider them garbage in order that I might gain Messiah and be found in him, not having my righteousness derived from Torah, but one that is through trusting in Messiah, the righteousness from God based on trust. My aim is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings becoming like him in his death, if somehow I might arrive at the resurrection from among the dead. And then pursuing the goal, not that I have already obtained this or been perfected, but I press on if only I might take hold of that for which Messiah Yeshua took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself as having taken hold of this, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal for the reward of the upward calling of God and Messiah Yeshua. Therefore, let all who are mature have this attitude. And if you have a different attitude in anything, this also God will reveal to you. Nevertheless, let us live up to the same standard we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in following my example and notice those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. For many walk who are enemies of the cross of Messiah. I have often told you about them, and now I am even weeping as I tell you. Their end is destruction. So Paul was very sad about, about the destruction of the, of the evil people that were, were not walk, walking with, um, with them and, and honoring Yeshua. Their God is their belly and their glory is in their shame. They set their minds on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, and from there we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. He will transform this humble body of ours into the likeness of his glorious body through the power that, it, that enables him even to put all things in subjection to himself. And the last scripture reading from the Brit Kadesha is from the book of Jacob, which in most Gentile Bibles, it is James uh, in the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version. It is Jacob. Um, Resist pride and evil. Where do quarrels and conflicts among you come from? Don't they come from the, the, the namely, namely your passions that battle within your body parts, you crave and have not. You murder and you envy, yet you cannot get it. You fight and you wage war. You do not have because you don't ask. That is real important scripture here. We have not because we don't ask. We need to communicate with our Father in heaven. We need to communicate and have relationship. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrong motives. So you may spend it on your passions. You adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity, enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. This is so timely in the in the world that we're living in now and we need to really 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 pay attention to this and and really stay focused on on the kingdom of heaven. 
and the world can pull you pull you in really quickly but we need to stay focused on what it is that god has us purposed for or do you think that in vain the scripture says he yearns jealously jealously over the spirit which he made to dwell in us but he gives greater grace therefore it says god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble therefore submit to god but resist the devil and he will flee from you draw near to god and he will draw near to you amen cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded lament and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom humble yourselves in the sight of adonai and he shall lift you up do not speak evil against one another brethren the one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the torah and judges the torah but if you judge the torah you are not a doer of the torah but a judge so this is getting back to yes the torah is still very important and we should be keeping it there is only one lawgiver and judge the one who is able to save and to destroy but who are you to judge your neighbor if the lord wills we will come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. What is your life? For you are a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or do that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, whoever knows the right thing to do and does not do it, for him it is sin. Again, to recap, um, the Torah portion, Moses recounts 42 sites. Um, Israel stayed during their 40 years of wandering in the desert. Um, also, that was with the second half, the uh, Parashat Messiah. Uh, Parashat Matot talks about the tribes and, and the designation of the land. Um, and also, uh, war was waged with Midian and also... Um, the daughters of Zelophehad um, married within their own tribes of Manasseh, and also the cities of refuge were uh, designated. Um, we we had Isaiah and Jeremiah as the half Torah, which which also paralleled uh, with uh, the Torah portions. Isaiah chapter sixty six opened with saying, "Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool." And that was also recaptured in Matthew chapter 5 when Yeshua uh, addressed the people about not swearing oaths, um, not swearing, uh, but I tell you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. So he, that, that's a, another parallel. And in the Hathor portion, you know, Jeremiah was actually dealing with the people, um, actually prophetically dealing with the people and letting them know what was going to befall them if they did not return to the Lord, but also promised redemption if they did. But of course, the choice was theirs. And, you know, Adonai gives us all free will. And of course, we know what happened. They did not choose wisely. Um, so in this portion from Jeremiah, it was a stinging rebuke of Israel's apostasy from, from Adonai. And therefore, judgment was sure and the people would be taken away into captivity. And indeed, they were. So then when we come to the Brit Kadashah portion, um, Yeshua, I, I already had... Um, address Matthew chapter 5 where Yeshua um, was addressing you know the, keeping the commandments and that he did not come to abolish the Torah or the prophets um, and, and address things even deeper um, and also in in Mark he also addressed you know 
um, the childlike humility um, that needed to take place. And, and he addressed righteousness. In Philippians, um, the people were being addressed, you know, uh, about being careful about being pulled into the ways of the world. Again, that, you know, what happened in the Old Testament continued to happen in the New Testament into our time frame. You know, and and this is this is what we need to to be aware of. Um, so we absolutely need to to stay focused on on what it is that we are to do. Also, um, in in the last reading in James, the passage from James deals with pride and spiritual adultery. And friendship with the world is enmity against God. Um, that was addressed as well. And in Philippians, uh, you know, the, the discussion of, of sticking, you know, not being worried about losing what is, you know, what is in your your world in the world but that you're gaining messiah he was he was saying oh yeah you know, actually paul was paul was telling the people all the things that he had done and then he had lost all that but in losing everything that he had in the past as soul of tarsus a pharisee he by giving all that up he gained messiah which was more precious to him than anything and again, as James addressed also uh, was, you know, friendship with the world is enmity with God. And when we humble ourselves before God, he will lift us up. Um, Israel was to wage war against the seven nations of Canaan and not befriend them. And we can therefore see an application with the Torah reading of this week's parasha. Um, what happened when, because they didn't do exactly what Ed and I told them to do. Thankfully, as recipients of the overcoming life of Yeshua, we operate from a place of victory and do not need to fight for it because he did it all for us. He is our rest and our victor over all the powers of darkness. Blessed be our King, King Yeshua. Also, in the first reading um, that we did from the Brit Kadashah, Yeshua was basically um, also talking about our words um, I, and saying, I tell you, on, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So again, um, we address those uh, the concerns and Yeshua's views about vows and Yeshua plainly warned us to not take any vows at all, uh, but be, be entirely truthful in all our communications for the one who obeys the truth. Oaths are unnecessary. The worse men are, the less they are bound by them and the better they are, the less there is need for them. So we must be on guard here. The words we use to communicate do matter to Adonai and have implications that far transcends what we normally consider. There is no chatter in the kingdom of heaven. There is no idle talk or insignificant utterance, not one. All our words will prove to be entirely prophetic. So our use of our language is intrinsic to the image and likeness of God that we are privileged to bear. It is one of God's greatest gifts to us, and we are responsible to use it to heal, bring life, and to proclaim the message of the gospel to others. And, and like I said, I addressed this before, and it is important. Watch what you say. You don't want to be speaking to illness. You want to speak to wellness and healing and bringing life and not death. We speak life. When we speak hastily out of anger or in a fit of some carnal passion, we pervert the image of God and we will be called to account for our words. May the Lord God of Israel help us to speak the truth in love to one another. That is really important. And that is the end of our Shabbat readings.
the scripture readings. And we're going to bring this portion to a close and go into our altar call. Father God, we thank you for this most powerful, powerful word. Your word is always powerful to us, and we thank you for it. And we ask you to help us to be more aware of the words that we speak and to think before we speak, to not make vows that cannot be kept, to be sincere, and to lift one another up and not tear down each other, to be aware and mindful of the world around us, but not participate in the world's evils, that we remain a separate people. We are your family and we need to remain separate from the world. We are different from the world. We thank you that that path of redemption even became possible and that became possible through Yeshua. So we thank you. We thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you are doing and all that you will do. We give you the honor, we give you the praise and we give you the glory in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. We're going to move into the altar call. If you have never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, this is this is the this is the time to do so. It I I can't imagine anybody walking in this world the way the world is today without Jesus, without Yeshua. Yeshua is his Hebrew name, and and it means salvation. And salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ through through Yeshua. Hamashiach and salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. The wages of sin are death. It's, it's a spiritual death and a separation from our creator eternally. And we don't want to do that. Our Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and reconciled to the Father. Sin cannot stand before a holy God. When the original sin occurred in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, the first Adam, we refer to him as, um, they both lost their glory, the glory of God that covered them. It was gone. It could not remain because they had sinned against God and they were thrusted out of the Garden of Eden and had to live out the rest of their lives in, the, in this fleshly body that we get to be born into in the flesh. Which brings us to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are born into it. Now, there was a sacrificial system that was put in place to cover sin, but it never took it away. Remember, sin cannot stand before a holy God, and sin separates us from God. And in order for God to be with his people, that sin had to be covered in some way, shape, or form. There had to be redemption that took place in some way, shape, or form. And God allowed that substitution. It was the shedding of the blood of innocent. And those animals that were, were sacrificed, those little lambs that were sacrificed, had to be blemish-free perfect in every way, inside and out. There could be no defect. Moving, that was a type and shadow, moving ahead to when Yeshua came as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. He came, he, to know Yeshua is to know that he is the second of the Godhead. And he didn't need to do this, but he loved us this much because this is the only way that we could be redeemed and reconciled to the Father, to have eternal life, to be saved, to be born again, was through him. So he emptied himself of his, of, of his God nature, became human, and he defeated the evil one that, that tripped up 
Eve in the Garden of Eden and caused her to sin. Um, and absolutely, the evil one hates humanity. He hates humanity, period. But Yeshua defeated him with in his life and in his death. He came. He lived a perfect, sinless life. The devil even tempted him, but he did not succeed. And he became our sacrifice for everyone, for every person on this planet that has ever lived and will live. He gave his life for so that we had a path to redemption. But we have free will to choose if we take that or not. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 said, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. The world will tell you there's many paths that will let you get to heaven and everybody's going to get to heaven. It's going to be a grand reunion. That is a lie. Again, false doctrine. Not everyone's going to heaven. Yeshua said that himself. He said, there will be those that stand before me and say, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not do this in your name? Did, you know, did I, did I not do that? And he's going to look at them and basically say, and I'm paraphrasing this, of course. Um, he's going to look at them and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. That clearly tells us not everybody's going to heaven. If you are not born again and saved, you're not going to heaven. That's simple. It, it wasn't made to be so complex, but you know, again, the evil one likes to throw out all kinds of things to complicate things. And no, not all paths lead to heaven. You can't be worshiping 300 or hundreds and hundreds of gods and goddesses and whatever, or yourself or an idol or money, and, and think you're going to go to heaven. This isn't going to happen. Yeshua would not have had to give his life if there was multitudes of ways to get to heaven. That was not a small thing that he did for us. It was huge. It was huge. He took on all the sins of the world. Everything. He became sin. He didn't know sin. Um, he became that sin. And that was an abomination to Father God, that sin. Just for that time, so we could be redeemed. So he came, he died on a cross, which was known as a curse. To die on a, a man hanging and dying on a tree was known as a curse. So he became all of that because he loved us he wanted us to be with him in eternity he spoke to nicodemus prior to being crucified uh, nicodemus came to him in the night and was questioning him and he clearly told nicodemus you must be born again born of spirit and water flesh is flesh spirit is spirit and flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. Ain't going to happen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. It is only through Yeshua, through Jesus Christ, that you can gain eternal life, that you can be saved. He died for every single one of our sins. He died for you. He died for me. And all you need to do is be sincere in asking for forgiveness of those sins and asking him to be your Lord and Savior and be born again into the family of God. It's very simple. The world will complicate things because the father of lies is the devil and he likes to complicate and cause chaos and confusion and distraction and all kinds of things. It's very simple. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. No one will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven to stand before Almighty God through Jesus. Period. And he would not have had to come and die for all of us if there was other ways. And that is a complete insult to him to say there's many paths to heaven because it's not true. Please don't fall for the way. That's that's a way of the world. That is a false, false statement. No truth to it whatsoever. And woe to those who 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 speak that lie and confuse many. First John chapter one verse nine says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one. And I'm going to just say a word of caution when you're asking to have your sins forgiven. There are many people that believe that, oh, I got my slate wiped clean. I can go right out and do it again and again and again and again and again. No, 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 no. He died. Jesus died once for all. He's not going to come and die over and over and over again. He, when he comes again, he's coming as the line of the tribe of Judah to rule and reign. He's the king. King of kings and the Lord of lords. Make no mistake. So no, don't go in with that attitude that, that you can keep doing this. Come with a contrite heart, sincere heart, and repent and turn to the Lord. You want to try to live a better life. That's not to say you're going to be perfect because none of us are perfect. No one is perfect. But if you find yourself slipping or doing anything like that, repent right away. You should always come before God with a clean heart and a right spirit. When Yeshua forgave the woman of adultery that the the people were about to stone and he he said to the crowd you who have no sin let you be the one to throw the first stone and they all knew that they had sinned in their life and they all dropped their stones and walked away and he asked the woman where are your your condemners and she said they're not here and he said neither do i condemn you but go and sin no more bam he forgave her but he said don't go back and doing this again so that's i want to caution caution you to you know when you, you, you to be sincere when you're asking to be forgiven not just to wipe your slate clean and go on about doing the same things over and over again. That's not repentance. So if you are ready to say a simple prayer with me, if you're ready for Jesus, Yeshua, to be the Lord of your life, you're ready to be born again into the family of God, you can say this simple prayer with me now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner, and I, I get it now. I, I understand that I have broken your holy laws and my sins separate from you, me from you, and I need a Savior, and I understand that Savior is Jesus, Yeshua. I also understand he took all of my sins when he died on the cross. He also took illnesses and afflictions when he was beaten by Roman soldiers prior to going to the cross. And I, and I can therefore declare by his stripes I am healed because he took that all. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he arose again from the dead and is sitting at the right hand of you, Father, right now. He's very much alive. And I believe he's coming again. And I want to be part of the family of God. I'm asking you sincerely to forgive me of any sin that I have ever committed or unknown or known. I want to change my ways and I know 
You're the only one that can forgive me. I believe you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am asking you to be Lord of my life. I'm giving my life and my heart to you, Jesus, right now, right here, right now. I'm asking for redemption. I'm asking to be saved. I'm asking to be born again. And I thank you for the gift of salvation. I thank you for the gift of eternal life. And I freely, of my own free will, accept. I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all of your ways for the rest of my life. Help me to walk a better path. I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am saved, I am healed, I am delivered, born again, and set free from sin and the consequences of sin. And I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious mighty and awesome name, amen and amen. And if you've said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one who does not stray from the word of God and bring in doctrines of men. And I say that over and over again because I see it over and over again. Um, and the misrepresentation of the word of God it is so abundant in the world that we live in today. So you need to be careful. Uh, you need to be as the Bereans um, were at the time of, of the apostles when they went out. There was a group of people known as the Bereans who studied those scrolls and they they had questions and, and, and they they made sure who was preaching at them was speaking the word of God. And they were they were hailed for what they were doing um, because it is really important. You don't want to just sit in a church pew and be preached at and just say, oh, yeah, this may be true without even knowing if it's true. You could be being preached a bold faced lie. And, you know, it, it could be one simple little bit of truth that's twisted that has you believing something that isn't true. Be careful. Be careful. Now walk humbly with your Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. You, you've heard that statement. And it's not a blanket statement. It is a, 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 an important statement. As you are now a child of God and member of the family of God, God, your creator, is your heavenly father. And he has always wanted relationship with his people. He tried to restore that. He had a relationship with Adam and Eve and they kind of blew things. And he tried to restore that um, with, with the people that came out of Egypt at the Exodus. But they decided they would rather let Moses have the relationship because the thundering and quaking at the mountain scared them too much. And if they heard from God anymore, they would surely die. This is what they told Moses. And they did that. This is how they got the law. They got the Torah. And because they said they would do whatever he said, but you, you go talk to him, Moses. So this is how they got the law. And, um, not the, you know, Moses had the relationship. He had a good relationship with God, even though he stumbled somewhat, God still loved Moses. Um, and, and there were others that had a relationship with God. The prophets heard from God, the prophets spoke with God. King David is another example. There's, there's, there's many people that you, you can read about in the Bible that had a one-on-one a -on -one relationship with the Lord, and you can have that too. He loves to hear his children speak to him. Take it, take things to the Lord in prayer. Wait for his answer. He does answer as well. So it's the little things, too, that he, he wants to hear from you. So develop that relationship with the Lord. Develop a prayer life. Join small groups. Join prayer groups. Um, 
that you know are within the the church that you decide to join or messianic congregation i'm not pointing out denominations because i'm not a believer of of this denomination is this better than this one and blah 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 we waymaker messianic jewish and christian center usa are non-denominational actually we're believers in yeshua we are messianic believers on our King Jesus, King Yeshua, and we're biblical, period. So um, I believe a lot of this denomination stuff causes a lot of division. There, and if you look at the world that we live in now, there is an uh, there is a enormous amount of division that is so senseless. So I discourage division especially within the body of Messiah. We need to unite as one body, as one family. Because what do you think you're going to be doing in eternity? You think there's going to be a Baptist Boulevard or a, a Catholic court? or I, No, they, you're going to be together as a family of God, worshiping our Creator, worshiping the King. There's not going to be division. There's not going to be any of that. No strife. None of that is going to go on in heaven. So it doesn't need to happen here. The body of Messiah needs to unite. This is how we are victorious too. Remember, when Jesus died on the cross, he gave us the authority and dominion back on the earth. The devil doesn't have it. He only he can only trip people up through deception. He is a defeated foe. So we need to rise up and stand firm in the authority that Jesus, our Savior, gave back to us as the body of Messiah. He is our head. We are the body. And there's things that we need to do and accomplish. We need to be about the Father's business. And what is the Father's business? The Great Commission is to share the gospel. The gospel will go out to all the nations. That is one thing that will be done. So we need to we need to really be careful who you listen to. I, I just I, I, I have to say that over and over. And get a copy of the Bible. Make a commitment to read the Bible. That is how you're going to know the word of God. But don't be like some of the people that I've seen and will take one little line and then twist it and go add to it. We're not supposed to add to it or subtract either. And I see so much of that. They misinterpret. They put in their own twist. That That's not what we're supposed to do. Read the whole thing in its entirety. Just don't take a little phrase and then run with it. No, read the whole thing. It has a whole meaning. And, and when people do this, it changes the whole meaning. So be careful, <laughs> again, who you listen to. And take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, you've asked the Holy Spirit to come live inside of you. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. He's not only is he the comforter, uh, he's a wonderful teacher. And you will always hear me pray for guidance of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit has the floor, uh, period. You don't, you, you, you don't want to hold back the Holy Spirit. So, you know, you can ask for discernment. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discerning the Spirit. It's very important. You need to, we need to be really on guard in the time that we're living in because we're pretty far out. We're in the last of the last of the days, you know, I, you know, the end days started after Yeshua departed here. And, you know, when you're hearing and you're reading in the Bible where the warnings were put out back then, you can imagine that it's even much more multiplied in the in in the time that we're living in with false doctrines false teachers false you know people that are just not really integrated in the word of god 
and off on their own and all the ways of the world, the deceptions of the world, the wolves in sheep's clothing. That was all warned in the Bible. You'll find it in the Bible. But now we're 2,000 plus years out. And you can imagine we need to really be careful. So hang on to the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on the Lord. He is coming soon. As he said, he is coming soon. And every day we're closer to the second coming of the Lord. Everything's not going to be straightened out in our time. We can do the best that we can, but Yeshua will straighten the whole works out when he is here. Absolutely. And don't get all caught. There, there's also a group that, that will get all caught up in, uh, you have to have this version of the Bible period. I'm telling you, go to Bible Hub, go to Bible Gateway, look up a version, uh, you know, a verse of the Bible and, and read the different versions and how they read. And, you know, with the one that you're most comfortable with at this point is probably the one that you will commit to reading uh, because you're comfortable with it and can get into it. So I'm going to say for your first purchase of a Bible is to, to, to buy the one that you're most comfortable with and that you're willing to read and make a commitment. This is the heart of your father that's in the Bible. You want to know who he is. You want to know what's expected, what he loves, what he doesn't love. Amen. Amen. And I could go digress further, but we're going to bring Shabbat to a close at this point. Um, as Shabbat draws to an end, the aroma of sweet, sweet spices lingers as the flame is extinguished until next week. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord, Adonai, is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the lights of fire. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who distinguishes between holy and secular. And the ironic blessing or the priestly blessing that is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is where Adonai spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. He wanted to bless the children of Israel and put his name on them. Um, when you were born again and saved, the name of God is written on you and you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are his child. No one can take you from him. No one can pluck you from his hand. You can fall away, but you don't want to do that. Trust me, you don't want to do that and, and be walking in this world the way the world is. So absolutely not. But the point being is this blessing is also for you as a member of the family of God. Adonai loves to bless his children. He loves you. He loved you so much that he sent Yeshua to redeem you and me and everyone. So the blessing Habraka goes like this in Hebrew. Ibaraka ka Adonai ve Ishmareka, Yaea Adonai panovaleka vi kuneka, Isa Adonai panovaleka ve semleka, Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen and amen. Shavua Tov, everyone. Have a good week. God bless each and every one of you. And I hope to see you guys, some of you, on Tuesday evening. You're more than welcome to join us. Don't forget there's a Bible study coming up as well this week. God bless.